In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct an independent sample t-test with bootstrapped estimated p-value and confidence intervals. So these data have been simulated. It's not based on a real study. I have a sample size of 115, and I'm particularly interested in variable 1. And I've got a grouping variable here to conduct the independent sample t-test where I have two groups. So first, I want to check out the distributions just to show you what kind of data we're dealing with here. So variable one in the dependent list, grouping in the factor list. And let's look at outliers. There might be some and skew, but a histogram is something I want to look at too. And a skew in kurtosis will be estimated. So we can see the skew for group one on the variable one dependent variable is 1.52. So that's pretty serious skew. It's not in excess of 2.0, which I recommend you consider. The other group has a skew of 1.367, which again is less than two. The kurtosis is 2.0, which is less than 9. Nonetheless, somebody might be a bit concerned about the level of skew in these data because when you look at the distributions, clearly that's not a normal distribution. And this is not a normal distribution. They are both positively skewed. And we have some warnings about outliers here, although none of them are asterisks, which would be my limit of considering the possibility of an outlier. Nonetheless, we can do an independent sample t-test with the asymptotic normal distribution theory approach, which is just the regular approach, and bootstrapping. So let's get to the bootstrapping of these data. So compare means independent sample t-test and put variable one into the test box and group into the grouping variable. And my groups are labeled one and two. Now, the key thing is if you have this module in SPSS, which is the bootstrap module, you'll have an extra button here. And if you click on it, you get perform bootstrap, you got 1,000, probably best to do 2,000 resamples, and bias corrected accelerated is probably the preferred option in most cases, and click OK. This is going to take 20, 30 seconds or so for it to run all the resampling from which it's going to create a sampling distribution to test the null hypothesis of equal means between the groups. And so the first table gives you the basic descriptive statistics, the mean standard deviation, so the mean in the first group is 102.09, and in the second group, 102.60. So there's very little difference between these two means. Standard deviations are a little bit different. We also get the uh, confidence intervals, and it says, unless otherwise noted, bootstrap results are based on 2,000 samples. The bootstrap results are all here. So the bias, the standard error, and the confidence intervals for the mean and the standard deviation are all bootstrapped. These point estimates don't change. These are just the standard error of the mean is just the asymptotic normal distribution theory, the regular approach. And obviously the mean and the standard deviation aren't going to change if you use bootstrapping or not, not the point estimates. So here's the independent sample t-test that's the regular one. And I'll just point out that the homogeneity of variance assumption has been satisfied. And so the p-value here in this row is 0.844. So we haven't rejected the null hypothesis. And the lower and upper bound mean differences with 95% confidence between negative 5.58 and 4.57. Now the bootstrap results are the last table. And the mean difference is estimated at 0 0.50586, which is exactly the same that you're going to get from the non-bootstrapping results. So means themselves don't change with bootstrapping. It's standard errors that change in confidence intervals. So the point estimates stay the same. The p-value, look how similar the p-value is for this bootstrap result. It's exactly the same as the result obtained from the asymptotic normal distribution theory. And that's because the null hypothesis re really does seem to be true in this case. And so we're not rejecting the null hypothesis falsely, whether we use the asymptotic normal distribution theory approach, which is the regular one, or the bootstrapping. Now, I mentioned in the textbook that you don't get any t-value from the bootstrap analysis but you can calculate a quasi t value from this by calculating the ratio of the mean difference 0 0.50586 so negative divided by the standard error which is over here 2.61674 and that is my t value negative 0.19 with a p value of 0.844 and you can see that this bootstrap based t value is very similar to the t value that's reported with the asymptotic normal distribution theory approach. And here are your confidence intervals. And if you do violate the assumption of homogeneity of variance, you have this row here to consult with the bootstrapped estimate. Now, in this case, there was very little difference between the two approaches. 
And in large part, that's because the mean differences were so small. But even if they were, I've, I've played around with different data sets. You get very similar types of differences between the means when the skew is not really bad. The problem is that there can be occasions where you have differential levels of skew. This is actually the same type of skew, 1.522 and 1.367. So because they're skewed in the same direction, it kind of makes things a bit simpler in terms of estimating a p-value with asymptotic normal distribution theory approach. If the skew was in the opposite direction or there was a difference more than, say, 0.5 in skew, I'd probably start to get a bit more concerned and you'll probably start to see more divergence between the p-values and you should probably always trust the bootstrapped approach. So this is a demonstration of calculating an independent sample t-test via bootstrapping, which you should consider if you're worried about the level of skew in your data.